Okay, here we go. Here's a quick introduction to Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is network simulation software where we can emulate different devices and simulate a network in action. You have the main stage here, and basically you drag and drop devices, connect them together, and then watch how communication works from device to device. You can use end devices like PCs and phones, and you can also use intermediary devices like routers and switches and wireless access points, etc. You've got pull down menus, tools, and the new toolbar is right up here at the top. Mostly I use the logical workspace and not the physical workspace. So most of the time I'm in the logical workspace. You know, you can watch communication in real time or you can slow everything down and watch packets as they go from device to device in simulation mode. So real-time mode and simulation mode. When you're in simulation mode or real-time mode, you also have this pop-out menu here, which is you, it's easy to not notice, um, so I'm going to point it out. Okay, let's start off with a basic communication we need to pick our devices down here. Now the main devices are the networking devices. If I click on this icon, I can see my routers, my switches, my hubs, wireless devices, firewalls, and cloud devices. Then you've got end devices like a PC, laptop, server, printer, IP phone, etc. You've got IoT devices like a microcontroller or a single board computer. And you've got your cables or your connections to connect the devices together. So for a quick example, I'm going to go to my end devices and I'll click on a PC and drop it here. So click and click. And then another PC and click and click. And I wanna connect them together. So I could connect them directly together by going to connections and choosing a crossover cable, which is right here. But let's use an intermediary device. So I'll click on my network devices and then over to switches, and then I have a choice of switches that I can choose from. I'm gonna go for a basic workgroup switch, a 2960 Cisco switch right here, and so there's my switch. Now, we wanna connect these devices together. Before I do that, I'm going to zoom in on the workspace. So I'm a little bit closer now. Okay, now to connect these devices together, I can use this tool right here, which is the automatic uh, connection, choose connection type kind of wizard, or I can choose which cable. So a PC to connect to the switch, I'm gonna click on a straight through ethernet cable. I'll click on the PC, and then I can choose between RS-232 serial port, nope, USB, USB, or fast ethernet. That's the port that we use for an ethernet cable, fast ethernet zero. So I'll click there and then drag over to the switch. When I get to the switch, I can hover over and see all of the ports on the switch. But what I'll do is I'll just click on this switch and then I can see what we have here. So the switch has a console port for a console connection, serial connection. I've got uh, fast ethernet ports here, one through 24, and two gigabit ethernet ports. So this is mostly a fast ethernet switch. It's kind of an old standby switch that we use in the Cisco Networking Academy. So I'll just choose one of these ports. Let's say fast ethernet port 10. So the interface is up with the green up arrow here. This interface is coming up, it's orange right now. And when it gets to green, the switch port will be in forwarding mode. So that'll take a couple of seconds here. Then I'll grab another cable. This time I'll start off by clicking on the switch. I'll choose a port and click, and then drag over to the other PC over here and click and click. So now I'm connected. Now these ports are not up yet. Oh, there one went up and this one will go up in a second. So I can fast forward time down here by clicking this button to fast forward time if you don't wanna wait. So to communicate from this PC to this PC, we need to configure these PCs. To configure a PC or a switch, all you have to do is click on the PC and you have, let's see here, five tabs, physical, config, desktop, programming, and attributes. So on the PC, you're mostly gonna be using the desktop tab where you have desktop programs like a web browser, a command prompt, 
you have a special IP configuration uh, tool. This would be like network connections in Windows. So I'll go to network connections and I'll give myself a static IP address. 192.168.0, we'll say .5. And then I'll click here and put a subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. And now I'm done. Um, I could put a default gateway if we had a router. And I could put a DNS server if we had a DNS server. But we don't have one right now, so I'll just leave it as is. And I'll close that tool. Then I can use these other tools here. You can see there's a bunch of tools to choose from. All right, I'll close this window and I'll go over to the other PC and I'll configure it likewise. So we've got the physical connections, we've got the config window, there's the desktop IP configuration, and we'll similarly give ourselves an IP address. So this one will be 192.168.0.10 and the subnet mask, and we're done. Now, I don't need to configure a switch because with a Cisco switch, they're plug and play ready to go. As soon as you plug in the switch and turn it on, which it's on by default, it's ready to go. However, you can see here, if I click on it, I see the physical representation of the switch here with the ports, and this is the way it looks. And uh, I've got a config window, which we usually don't use um, because it's kind of like a cheat. Uh, so we use usually the command line interface to do most of our configurations. So the text is a little small, so I always encourage my students to go to Options, Preferences, and then Font, and then I can go to the command line interface setting, and I can increase the font size so that it's easier to see when I'm working on the switch. Now, in the command line interface, if I'm going to configure the switch, I can see the, the font's a little bit bigger. But we don't have to configure the switch, so I'll just close that window. And now we want to see a communication from this PC to this PC. So I'll open up PC1, open a command prompt, and I'll issue a ping. Ping space 192.168.0.10, I'll hit enter and you can see I'm getting a reply from that device. So there we are. We have a communication from this end to this end and back again. Now if I want to do that really quickly and watch a ping go from this side to this side, I can just click right here in the under simple PDU and then click here and then click here and the PDU is executed from here to here. A ping is executed from here to here and down here in this window I see that it's successful. If I want to watch that execution, I can go to simulation mode and I can hit play. And there goes the ping over through the switch. And we'll see here, keep going. There it goes. And back again, and I can see the packets as they travel across. And that's in simulation mode. All right, I'll go back to real time mode and I'll delete that. Let's switch this PC out, or let's add another end device. This time I'll add a server and set up a client-server relationship. This server, desktop, IP configuration, we'll give it the address 192.168.0.250. Same subnet mask, or 255.255.255.0. Notice the server which once again is right here under end devices located right here. Um, the server has services, a services tab, and these are some of the servers that it runs. It has an HTTP server, a DHCP server, DHCP version 6, TFTP, DNS, syslog, AAA, network time protocol, email server, FTP server, and so on and so forth. So under HTTP server, we can see there it is, it's on. HTTPS is also on, and then it has a web page, index.html, which you can edit and you can change. Instead of saying hello world. Uh, let's see here, instead of saying welcome to Cisco Packet Tracer, I'll say welcome to Dan's courses or welcome to the network. All right, and save. Okay, so 
and then file manager so there it is so there's the server it's on so if we wanted to see that web page all I've got to do is go to cables here connections I'll get a Ethernet cable click and then click on fast Ethernet 0 over to the switch this time I'll put it in a gigabit Ethernet port now the port is uh, listening and learning and then forwarding so I'll do fast forward to bring it up quickly and then I'll open up the PC open up the web browser put in the URL into the address bar 192.168.0.250 and go and there it is there's the web page and it says right here welcome to the network so I was able to edit the home page on the server so you can set up all kinds of client server relationships you can set up connected local area networks you can set up routers that connect to other networks you can implement all kinds of routing protocols you can simulate or emulate the WAN um, and connections let's say across the internet emulate those types of connections you can use serial connections uh, emulate DSL connections cable connections you name it but this is a perfect tool for learning about networking in kind of a, a, a simple easy to learn environment